I'm Emma from Honey Buns Bakery in Dorset and welcome to another one of our Honey Buns Bake Along videos. Today I'm going to do the gorgeously named Scrum Diddly Umptious Cookies and these are in our archive, Honey Buns Recipe Archive. We used to make them, it's 2021 now, and we made them up until 1999. Um, they're gorgeous. They're based on our other classic, the Armandi cookie, and we stopped doing the cookies all together a few years ago, sadly, because they were just too much. We, we streamlined our range, so they were casualties of that, sadly. Um, but they're a delicious, delicious little cookie. Um, based on the amaretti, the Italian amaretti, that's where the inspiration came from. So chiefly made out of ground almonds, that's the main ingredient. And I have, I'll tell you what I've put in the bowl. What I'm going to show you today is the mixing, how easy it is, um, rolling out and making a little indentation to put your delicious jam in, which I'll show you in a minute. So into here, I will excuse me, I'm going to read off the ingredients here in case I make a mistake. 70 grams of stem ginger, and I use the OP brand, which is in a jar, which I don't know where it is now. Uh, and there's stem ginger in there in syrup. You use the drained stem ginger, they come in kind of rough hewn spheres, and you just chop that roughly, dice it, put that in your bowl, 70 grams of that, then it's 400 grams of sugar. I know that's quite a lot, but it's unavoidable in this recipe, unfortunately. I've used, as an experiment, I've used light muscovado, which is because that's what I had in stock, but actually the recipe calls for caster sugar. So it's quite a departation from that. We'll see how it, see how it works out. 400 grams of ground almonds or I use ground almonds because that's what I've got in stock that you can swap in and I would recommend this 200 grams of ground hazelnut 200 grams of ground almond the reason for that the hazelnut's slightly less sweet than the ground almonds you get an interesting um, build-up of flavor and texture the ground hazelnuts tend to be just a little bit coarser than and grainier than the ground almonds then use the grating the zest of two lemons, unwaxed if possible, um, finely grated in there. So the lemon and ginger is the, the overall flavour, a classic. Um, a teaspoon of lemon oil. The brand that we really, really love is Boagian, which is available, hmm, just trying to think now, sous chef, S O U S dot chef dot co dot UK. Um, they are brilliant for chefy ingredients and, and the like. And then four egg whites, which I haven't yet cracked. So I'll just grab a bowl for those, actually. Here we go. And I've lined a tin with silicon paper or baking parchment. You could also brush it. I wouldn't, actually. I would definitely use the paper thinking about it. You really don't want them to stick. Then I've put the oven on preheated to 170 degrees C uh, already so that we can pop the in as soon as we've mixed them in. I'm just going to check that I haven't, I have forgotten something. Two teaspoons of lemon curd as well that go directly into the mix. Just to give you a heads up with the jam uh, that we're going to use in the centre of the cookies before we bake them, you could use lemon curd very, very happily. You could put mashed up stem ginger from the the jar that you've got in there that would work really well but I'm going to try today it's from uh, Tip Tree the rhubarb and ginger jam because I think that will work really quite nicely as well so I've got all of the ingredients in here and I'm going to add the egg whites so it's a gorgeous it's a gorgeous mixture of flavors um, they're really light and naturally gluten-free and dairy-free to boot. So they were very, very popular when we did make them. It's a shame we don't do them anymore, really. But you guys can have the recipe. The other thing that you can do, which we've done to great effect, is make a flam or tart base from the same mixture. So that will be exactly the right quantity to do a flan. Pre 
press the cookie dough mixture into the plum base instead of rolling them out into individual cookies and bake it, allow it to cool and then you can stack it up with, spread it with lemon curd and stack up with fresh blueberries and then you can build up layers, you can do another tart base, more lemon curd, more blueberries and so you go on, so yeah, limitless really. Okay, so that's my fourth egg white. So that's all good. Stick that in there. And then my electric whizzy thing. Highly recommend these. This is a Kenwood, other brands available, but I do love it. when you're working with a stiff dough, which this is. So I don't want to hurt the mixer any much more. So I'm just going to finish it off with the spatula. And it's a pleasing dough to work with. It's, it's really firm, soft at the same time, so pretty malleable. Thing to point out with this recipe, the nice thing about it is there's no added fats. So you're just relying on the natural oils of the ground nuts, of the ground hazelnut and almond that you've got there. I'll get rid of that. I've got a bit of an issue with my icing sugar, which hopefully shows you how un unorchestrated and manipulated these videos are. It's kind of caked onto the bottom of the um, thing, so I might have to forego that. What I would suggest that you do, or recommend that you do rather, is get a bowl, any kind of witch bowl, put your icing sugar in there, and then I'll show you. Um, I'm just doing this by eye, but you could, what, what you should really do is divide your dough into halves, and then keep dividing it into halves until you get to the size of the cookie that you want and then you'll get an, a sensible number from your mixture if you see what I mean. So what I would then recommend is that you coat the um, cookies in the icing sugar, not for sweetness just because it looks lovely, that's all, it gives a really lovely dusting which then stays on throughout the cooking process. So what you can do, what we would do in the bakery and they're much more artful about doing it than I would be is to take a knife and squidge around gives a nice pattern flattens out your cookie and when done properly when you've creased it enough and squidged it enough when it bakes you'll develop cracks around the outside of the cookie which actually looks really lovely and then repeat i'm not going to do that i'm just going to gently flatten mine out then and this is optional actually you might be quite content with those you could put a whole almond on top as a decoration which would look really lovely or what i'm going to do is make an indentation with my fingers. You could use a teaspoon and spoon in your jam. Okay, so the B, that I've started with a quarter. I'll see how I go. So yeah, total of half a teaspoon of jam or lemon curd per cookie. And they look, if you haven't seen our raspberry thumbs video already, they look super similar to that. 
okay? So rather than a bun, it is actually a, it will come out as a crispy shell. Um, and then when you bite into it, you've got a really yielding, chewy, almondy deliciousness inside. So you've got the goo and you've got the crisp outer shell. It really is splendidly unctuous. So they'll go into the oven at 170. I would pop them in for 20 minutes, check, and then possibly go, let's see what I say in the recipe, probably, I don't know. Um, hmm. It says 14 to 16 minutes, which surprises me actually. Um, yeah. I know why, because that's 180 degrees. I think what I would do, yeah, 180, 16 minutes, see how you go, and then it might be another couple of minutes. Right, so what? So the cooking time is gonna be um, 14 to 16 minutes. And what you want to do is lift, oh actually I was just picking that out, there's actually a piece of stem ginger, so I'm gonna stick that back in. Um, 16 minutes, lift the underside of the cookie gently with a fish slice, not your finger because it's going to be hot, and check that they're done underneath. You'll tell because A, they're firm, and B, there'll be a light golden to very light brown colour underneath, and then, yeah, they're done. They might just need another minute, but I, yeah, 16 minutes should be just about spot on. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you've got any questions at all, just direct me on Instagram. Instagram and I'll be super happy to answer any questions. So just to refresh, they are gluten-free, they are dairy-free, and we've used a rhubarb and ginger jam today, but you can sub in lemon curd, marmalade, anything you want, or you can omit the jam altogether and just put a whole almond on there, which would look rather nice. So thank you for watching and yeah, don't forget to send us your pictures. And if you um, tag us, we can share those as well. Thank you very much indeed. Bye.